What's up solo players, today we're going to be talking about the new features that have made their way into instant action as of the recent Age of Rebellion update. If you're unfamiliar with the update, we got a bunch of new content surrounding the original trilogy including new maps for co-op and brand new reinforcements for the Rebellion and Empire. While we didn't receive any new maps for instant action in this update, we did receive a number of new features that are absolutely game changing for the offline mode. It should be noted that we usually receive new maps for instant action when Supremacy gets new maps, which has been confirmed by the developers that the original trilogy will be coming to Supremacy next month in March, so that's likely when we'll be receiving original trilogy content in instant action as well. In this update, instant action received a bunch of game changing features, the two main ones being friendly and enemy vehicle AI and the ability for friendly hero AI to assist you in battle. On top of that, we got a number of parameters to let you customize your offline match to your almost perfect desired liking. I would say the vehicle AI are my favorite thing about the update. DICE kind of blew me away with this because not only can you turn on and off the ability for the AI to use vehicles, but you can set the amount of vehicles that appear on the battlefield. In total, the AI can use two vehicles per side, two enemy vehicle AI and two friendly vehicle AI, making a total of four vehicles you can see on the battlefield duking it out. Five if you decide to hop in a vehicle and wreak havoc yourself. Can we get a moment just to thank DICE for this? Not only is there vehicle AI to fight against, but your AI team also uses vehicles. The introduction of vehicle AI definitely changes the whole dynamic of instant action since you have to strategize in order to counter them. When they appear on the field, at least the tank type vehicles, they're not a force to be reckoned with. In the prequel era, I had a blast taking down vehicles as the clone commando, and it seems they play more aggressively there. In the sequel era, vehicles appear only on Agent Kloss, and don't seem to be as aggressive as the Clone Wars maps. I do hope in the future though, we at least get ATSTs on Takadana like in multiplayer, or Starkiller Base as a sequel era map, since that map would be perfect for vehicle warfare in the sequel trilogy. Either way, vehicles make instant action feel more chaotic and I can't wait to see them in the original trilogy instant action maps. One of my biggest dreams since the launch of the game was to fight large scale battles offline on Tatooine with ATST walkers stomping around and trying to take them out as foot soldiers. Hopefully next month that dream will finally come true. The next big feature that instant action got was the ability for the AI to use friendly heroes on your team. And as I said in my 11 key features that instant action needs, Friendly Hero AI is also a game changer. I had the fortunate luck of having my game glitch in a Friendly Hero AI once, and it felt like a whole new mode. Well, now it's finally a feature and you can even set the number of Friendly Hero AIs that appear on your team, and the enemy team as well. So while you're playing as a regular trooper, you'll often see AI heroes duking it out and it really immerses you as you play. No longer is the fate of the match on your shoulders. With Friendly Hero AI added, it makes the game feel more like multiplayer and that there's more than one competent player on your team, and in this case, there can be four other competent players on your team. The only drawback to this feature is that if an AI is using a hero just like in multiplayer, you won't be able to select that hero yourself. As I said before, the ideal solution would to just have that hero despawn after you select them. But I'm perfectly okay with settling for this since you can turn their inclusion off in the main instant action menu and hog all the heroes to your stingy ass self if you want. So the ability to turn this on and off is also a welcomed feature. On top of these two incredible features, we have the ability to set team sizes just like an arcade, but here's the crazy part. You can set each team to have a maximum number of 14 units and you can set it to be as low as zero. This means you can have zero AI players on both teams and free roam each map to your desire. I honestly wasn't expecting this since in arcade you can only set the number of AI in multiples of two. But in instant action, you can set the number of AI units to any number between 0 and 14 on consoles. Also, this feature allows you to do one-on-one -on -one duels or offset the AI so that there's more or less AI on either team. One really cool feature I found out that you can do is have one-on-one -on -one hero duels if you set the number of AI to 1 and the number of heroes that can appear on the enemy team to 4. Once you kill the regular trooper, the enemy AI will generally only spawn in as heroes and you can do one-on-one -on -one hero duels to your heart's content as long as you also set the number of AI on your team to 0 as well. On top of being able to set the number of heroes that appear on both your team and the enemy team, you can also set the reinforcements for both teams as well. You can have the enemy team full of reinforcements and heroes, and your team with none, or vice versa. 
Honestly, DICE has given us almost limitless customization options since there is a number of different parameters you can set to make the match exactly what you want it to be. I think the only thing it's missing is the option for cross era heroes and the ability to select what types of heroes show up on the battlefield regarding if they're blaster heroes or lightsaber heroes. However, with these new features also comes a number of glitches. If you set the number of AI to appear during a match to the maximum limit, you'll experience frame rate drops and short game freeze ups. Personally, I don't mind this since it's optional and isn't totally game breaking. I did have my game crash once, but it is definitely noticeable and I had my game freeze up a few times as a result. There is a heads up in the description of the new toggle switches that says you might experience performance issues, but again, it's bearable and I'd rather experience some slowdowns here and there than to have a boring empty offline match. There's also a new squad feature that allows you to spawn in on squad members on your team just like in multiplayer. This is a welcome feature because before you could only spawn in on control points or on the starting area of your initial spawn point. Here you can spawn on a teammate and get into the action so much quicker like in multiplayer and it just keeps the pace of instant action constantly flowing. I'm hoping they take it a step further and allow squad members to follow you or give you the ability to direct them to a command post. In all, I wasn't expecting this update to be as awesome as it was regarding instant action. With vehicle and friendly hero AI, matches feel so much more alive and less empty. I'm extremely excited to see what the original trilogy brings to instant action, and even more excited since it's my favorite Star Wars era and has been the number one thing I've been looking forward to since the game came out. I hope you guys enjoyed the video or at least found it informative. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of the new update and what you're looking forward to in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe and check out our other nerdy videos on our production channel since support for that keeps us motivated to make more content in general. And we have a lot of fun doing that stuff as well. But until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.